Hi, this is TapCat. Welcome back to the Civilization 5 tutorial series. Today we're going to cover a topic that came up in a viewer comment. So let me just read this. It said, did I miss anything or did you never talk about specialists? I really would like to hear about what are specialists exactly for, how many of the population we should set as specialists, when we should set them as specialists, when is it logical to assign them, would love to hear your opinion about this. So let me just say up front that no, you didn't miss anything. This is something I just did not think to talk about at all in the earlier chapters. So we're going to dedicate this one to the topic of specialists and great people. Now, I'll just preface my remarks by saying that I'm going to assume that you're basic strategy is at least somewhat similar to what I've shown in the earlier chapters. In other words, that you're not doing something like going for a super wide empire where you found, you know, 10 cities and your goal is to have a population of like six each because that would radically change your entire approach. Okay. But if you're going to have say three to five cities, and any kind of conventional approach, then this should work for you. Let's answer the first question first. What are specialists for exactly? Well, they do two things. The first, if you just put your mouse cursor directly over the spot where you assign the specialist, it will tell you a bonus that you'll earn each turn. You can see what it's going to be. Now, usually the dominant bonus comes down to um, whatever type of building that is. So, for example, a university assigning a specialist there will give you science. A factory will give you production. It isn't unusual that, you know, the buildings may also have a secondary effect. So, the factory may give you production and a little bit of science or something like that. Now, one thing that may not be obvious at first glance is that if you see you're going to earn five science from assigning a specialist to university, remember, you'll actually get more than that. The university itself gives you a bonus for any science generated in that city. Research labs do the same. And any bonus of that type will apply to what the specialist generates just the same as it will, you know, anything else. So however good it looks on the surface, you know, in reality, as you build the city up, it'll probably be anywhere from 50 to 100 percent more than that. The other thing that specialists give you is that you'll earn points toward your next great person. And just like the immediate bonus, the points apply to the great person of the same type as that building. So the university will help you earn a great scientist, a uh, bank will help you earn a great merchant, and a factory will help you earn a great engineer. Now, you may be wondering, how many points do I need to pay for one great person? And here's your answer. The first of any type will cost you 100 points. The second one, 200, and it'll just keep going up by 100 points as you go along. But one wrinkle to that is there are three great people types who are all in one pool when it comes to determining their cost. So for merchants, engineers, and scientists, if you earn any of those, it will increase the cost of all of them. Okay, so they're all in the considered one thing when determining how much the next one will cost. Also, if a wonder or a social policy or something gives you a free great person, that will still add to the cost of your next one. Okay, even though you didn't buy it with points, it'll still count against you. One implication of this, and this may be obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway, is that you should not simply 
work every specialist slot in every building. If it's important to you to get a lot of great scientists, every merchant you earn, every great merchant, will just push that farther away, as will each great engineer. So, at least within this pool of three, you want to focus your specialists where it's most important to you. Now, in my view, the vast majority of games, what you want are scientists. That's what will help you win more games. But that said, maybe your capital has very poor production and an early manufactory would really help that. So if that's the case, then you want to assign specialists to your factory or to your workshop and try to get them. Maybe even see if there's a wonder, you know, that will help you there. There's actually quite a few that apply to engineering. And, you know, once you've got that, then shift over to scientists. But you're literally working against yourself if you just fill up all of those slots and you're kind of randomly popping stuff out that you don't necessarily care about. Because while a great engineer is always good, okay, you can always just find some random wonder and it would be better to have the wonder than to not have the wonder. Oh, and this engineer will let me rush it. Okay, but the problem is that getting that engineer means you put off a scientist, which would have helped push you through the tech tree faster. And pretty much no matter what your desired victory condition is, getting through the tech tree faster will help you win more than some random wonder. But regardless of which one you're prioritizing, you just want to make sure that you focus on getting that and don't delay it by scattering specialists around to all three categories. One more wrinkle, which is that as you earn these points, it only counts toward producing a great person in that city. So you could have 10 cities that have each produced 50 points each toward your first great scientist, and you won't have one yet. You have to get to 100 in one place. So keep that in mind if you're planning on building wonders that contribute points in a particular category that, you know, you, you apply your specialists so that they're cumulative in the same place. Don't split your efforts, you know what I'm saying? So like, don't have all science specialists in one city, all engineering in another city, but in that engineering city, you also have a wonder that's producing great scientist points. You know, you would want that where you're working the science specialists. So let's go ahead now and tackle another question from the comment, which is, how early should you start staffing these up? Now, I would say the answer in all truth is as soon as you can. And not necessarily for all of them. I would generally say you want to build the Writer's Guild and put two specialists on it as early as possible without compromising you know, your ability to survive or things like that. And then the same would be true with for the university. You'll see in pretty much every Let's Play I've done, I'm pushing hard to get to universities. And once I get them, I staff them. I have to be in a really desperate way for other priorities to not do that. I don't generally staff, you know, the engineering ones. I don't generally staff the financial ones. I, if I do it, it's usually for just a short time because I'm desperate for a little extra production or gold or whatever. Uh, but I would definitely say to build the guilds as soon as you can because that will help you get new social policies. And uh, particularly pushing into rationalism is very important. And also filling out all of your science ones as early as you can reasonably do it. The final question from the comment is, how many specialists should you set in one city? Now, I kind of already answered that. Uh, realistically, you should have your science buildings staffed in every city. 
And then you need the uh, guilds staffed as well. In an ideal situation, you'll have one city that has both a garden and your national epic where you've got all of those guilds, plus, of course, the science you know, buildings, um, all staffed with specialists. But here's the trick. You know, specialists consume the same amount of food as every other citizen you've got, but they produce none. So depending on how, you know, how fertile the area around your city is, how big you've managed to grow it and all that, you may not be able to have, you know, like 10 specialists, which is, I believe, what it would take to have all the guilds plus the science. Um, you know, 10 specialists is a lot. And so if you can't do that in one city, you may get stuck where you have to build at least one guild somewhere else. Uh, you know, it's not ideal because wherever you don't have both a garden and a national epic, you'll get fewer great people out of that guild. But that said, if you're not staffing, you know, with a specialist, you don't get any great people. So, yeah, newsflash, it's better to get some than it is to get none. So if you end up with less, you end up with less, but it is more than nothing. And with that, I think we've pretty well covered the questions that were asked and the topic of how to generate great people using specialists, at least to the extent I can think of it. Um, there are other ways to get great people. You can buy them with faith. Uh, you can sometimes get a free one off of a social policy or a wonder. Uh, but I'm going to try to keep this one focused and we won't get sidetracked onto those different areas. Now, if you have a question of, you know, something I could cover in a future video in this series, uh, by all means, leave it in the comment and I will definitely consider it. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching. I hope we see you next time.